Hey guys, welcome to the live stream. We are a little bit early, so we're gonna give people a chance to log on. And I have got to get set up so I can see your live chats. That's pretty fun. So let me go into <laughs> the live stream in my channel. I just wanna be able to see your chats on my phone, so I am checking that out. Oh. Hey guys, welcome to the live stream. <laughs> That's gonna is. echo like a son of a gun. All right, so let me churn down the quality on this all the way all right so welcome to the live stream first of all thanks for joining this is gonna be super fun um, today I'm gonna to just basically I'm gonna take you around the airplane I'm gonna show you some of the customizations and some of the features that I really love about my airplane and then we're gonna go fly and I'm gonna show you a couple of different takeoff techniques that I use we've also had some questions about hey what would happen if you did this during a takeoff for example how does the cub do when you don't use flaps when you take off and so I'm gonna definitely um, show you some different techniques we do have cameras going and some help here today obviously so we are going to obviously uh, produce an edited version of this live feed that kind of con condenses everything down because live is a little bit longer um, like I said, I have a couple of helpers here, so if you have any questions as I'm going through this, type them in the live chat. Uh, especially if you do a super chat, we're going to answer all those for sure. We are at a live airport, so we may have airplane noise coming through. We do have a National Guard Armory that's uh, live right now. We had a couple of Blackhawks just take off, and so we may pause for a minute if they come and, and make some noise. I do have a throat loss in gin. I'm still overcoming that cough that I, that I usually get around this season. My gosh, who doesn't? But uh, while I've got you, thanks for joining. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. We have got so much fun stuff for you this winter that we've got planned with me and, and all my friends at Flying Cowboys. So with that said, let's, uh, what's that? Okay, welcome. We've got 100 and some odd, 135 people on so far and just on the live feed. That's pretty awesome. So this is Ghost. This is my Carbon Cub EX. This is the first kit plane, the EX models, that uh, Cub Crafters has come out with. It's basically identical to the Carbon Cub SS, but this is the home-built experimental version. Um, as you can tell, I like things that are big. <laughs> These are the biggest tires you get. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, why do you have tires so big? Uh, and I, I can kind of joke, I say, well, because they don't make any bigger. If they made 40 inch tires, I'd put those on. If they made bigger than, these are the 35 Alaska Bush Wheels. And uh, for me, what I do in the back country, they just are an easy button. Like I can run over really large rocks and not really worry about the terrain. Winter's coming and I will land on snow in these. Um, not too deep a snow, but if it's nice soft stuff, the stuff you want to avoid when you're landing on snow is if there's a crusty surface and then stop soft stuff underneath that's really scary um, that you want skis to, to do but you know you got six seven inches of, of snow that doesn't have a crust on it you're good to go with these big tires and then of course you've seen me land on little islands and um, rocky beaches and all kinds of crazy fun stuff so big tires are awesome. Now in order to put big tires on your airplane you're going to need to upgrade your wheels and your brakes because obviously this is a big a big amount of moving mass but it's also going to create a lot of torque that you need to overcome in the braking system so if you look if you wanted to look on the back I have much bigger brake calipers than you normally would on a Cub. These are the these are the Airframes Alaska they're basically a uh, a knockoff or a copy of Cleveland style brakes. I won't say knockoff or copy, they're they're based on Cleveland. But they provide plenty of braking power, plenty of torque to get these big wheels stopped, get these get this airplane stopped. While we're down here, I also have shock monster shocks. That is a huge, huge upgrade. You know, as far as return on investment, and if you have an experimental aircraft. That is probably the single most important upgrade that you can do on your airplane, other than more, maybe more horsepower. But shocks are amazing. And th these are the TK Shock Monster shocks. 
Um, this is an earlier model because I was one of the early adopters. They have several different revisions of this that are available and maybe a little bit better than these, but they, these just work so good that I haven't, I haven't really touched them. So shock monster shocks, tell your friends. These are an air shock. There's no springs or anything in them, uh, but they're a very good stage one single chamber air nitrogen shock. Uh, so they've got a fluid in there for dampening and really all your dampening is going to come by way of that nitrogen, that air inside the shock. Um, fantastic. Just, I can't say enough about them. They're great shocks. Okay, as far as the motor goes, um, I've, I've basically got the, what? Would you like to hear a question from Brian Stofener? Brian Stofener has a question. How long will your tires last? Um, well, that's a great question. The question is how long will my, will my tires last? Uh, it really depends on how much asphalt work you do. Um, I'm based here at the South Valley Regional Airport here just outside of the Salt Lake City area and they actually have an ordinance where they don't allow bush planes to land in the dirt. Boo! <laughs> that sucks. I'm gonna hopefully, hopefully try to fix that. My gosh, that just blows. I actually flew here for about 15 years before I knew about that ordinance and so it just really sucks. If you're landing on asphalt a lot with your bush wheels, they're obviously going to wear a lot faster than if you're landing off airport or off runway. Like if you're landing in gravel or grass especially, they're going to last a really, really long time. Um, I tend to baby mine, so I'm at minimum controllable airspeed when I'm, I'm landing on asphalt and I try to land positively and that's something you do in the bush flying world is you don't necessarily grease your landings every single time because that leaves a longer skid mark and longer wear section on the tire. I like to kind of just plop it down at the slowest speed possible, get them spun up as quickly as possible. Um, a lot of the time you wear out tires the most while you're taxiing, believe it or not, with bush wheels on asphalt. So you're just aware when you're using your brakes a lot or you're doing tight pivot turns that you're just twisting off a lot of that rubber. And that's the same with any tire. If you, if you know how to properly wear a tire, they're gonna last a lot longer. So mine lasts longer than say the average bush wheel that a lot of people have. A um, lot of students in the pattern today, so awesome. But uh, I will usually get with the amount of flying I do, maybe a year and a half to two years out of a set of brand new bush wheels. So hopefully that answers your question. Back to the walk around. This is the standard CC340 motor that Cub Crafters puts in their EX line. Everything up to now the EX3 or the FX3 was this motor, the CC340. On paper it says it's a 180 horsepower motor. Um, and I agree with them, it's, it's a really good motor from that perspective. When I first bought my airplane, I flew it to California and took it to a company called Lycon. And they just have some engine, um, I'm not gonna say crazy modifications, but just, I did a port and polish and a balance on my, on my aircraft, on the motor. And just makes it run really smooth and makes it a great motor. Does it necessarily add a ton of horsepower? I don't know, they showed me some dyno numbers that said it did, but uh, debatable, I don't know. It did make it run really quite smooth and I fly with a lot of other guys that have the same exact aircraft, the same exact motor setup than I do. And mine does tend to operate uh, a little smoother. Um, I don't know if it's more efficient, I don't know if it has more power, but it's definitely a great, smooth, reliable motor. I love it. Now, I'm holding on to a also an aftermarket propeller. This is not the stock Kato that the Carbon Cub comes on, or that comes on the Carbon Cub. This is the Whirlwind. It's an 82 inch ground adjustable propeller. And one of the reasons why I like the ground adjustable propeller, it's, it's kind of almost getting the ability to, to adjust your propeller for different scenarios. So for example, when I did the Stoll um, competition at Oshkosh, I take almost all the bite out, flatten the prop out, and it really gives you that acceleration punch uh, to basically get off the ground. But then you're over revving as soon as you're at flight speed. So as soon as you get to like 30 miles an hour and you're in the air, you're pulling back on the prop because you don't want to over rev the motor. But really what matters the most is that initial 
three seconds when you go from zero to flight speed you want as much acceleration as possible to get this mass moving so you see so it's it's like a constant speed propeller where they actually will go right up to the red line at the, and you have full power the the maximum amount of, of torque possible to pull that airplane forward um, so the ground adjustable is great. It's it's not so great in that it has to be adjusted on the ground But you pay a penalty in weight when you have a constant speed propeller and this you have a much smaller penalty And when I'm traveling I do increase that pitch quite a bit and lose that takeoff performance But I have a much better cruise uh, to answer a lot of common questions a common question I get is how fast can I fly this carbon cub and um, my average speed is not necessarily how fast the airplane can go. I'm usually flying with other of my buddies or whatever the case may be there. And I'll cruise typically around 95 to 100 miles an hour. But if I pitch the propeller correctly for cruise in efficiency, I can indicate about 120 or 125 miles per hour. We had a question. Handsome Dan Bottomer asked. Handsome Dan Bottomer? Bottomer. Bottomer. Hello, handsome Dan. While What's your you're question? near the prop, why not a three blade? What's the difference? Why not a three blade? Well, I, I gotta tell you, when you're matching the right propeller to the motor, your selection becomes narrow when you're as finicky as me. I don't know if that makes sense, but there just wasn't a propeller that meted my personal requirements in a three blade option that I could find. Now, I like a long blade because you're getting a lot of lift and a lot of efficiency with a longer blade at slower air speeds. Now faster airplanes are going to benefit from a shorter propeller and a little bit more pitch. That's just how the game works. Um, and if I went to a three blade, in order to get it to rev up to speed, I'd have to go with less propeller tip. And really that propeller tip, as long as you keep it slow enough so it's not supersonic, you get a lot of efficiency out of the tip. And I've just noticed in the backcountry, if you have a nice long prop that's got a good cord on it, you're gonna get a lot of low end torque and just brute force pulling power. Whereas if you go with the, the propellers that are really designed for the faster aircraft, you're sacrificing a lot of that brute force pulling power. And you can really see it. Even, uh, you know, for example, they put twist in these propellers to make them efficient at a particular speed. And they call it a, uh, some manufacturers will call it a power band and others will call it other things but um, if you've got a more aggressive twist in there it's really designed for a longer prop and then a less aggressive twist is designed for shorter props and then they look at hey this propeller is designed for a 200 mile an hour airplane and so if you're going slower than that you're gonna lose some efficiency based on just how the propeller is designed and so it's really trial and error when it comes to propeller selection You've got to just find the right match for your aircraft. And I've been working with a propeller manufacturer out of China called Sterna to come up with the perfect bush propeller. Um, we're still not there yet. It's a little heavy as far as the hub, but as far as the, the blade design, we're there. It's amazing. Um, I've just got to, I'm work with, working with them to, to get the hub in there and the ground adjustable portion a little bit lighter. Um, so that we're not having to lug around an extra 13 or 12 or 10 pounds of extra mass right at the front of your airplane where you don't need it. All right, let's continue around the airplane unless we have more questions. Keep going. All right, so we've seen the brakes, we've seen the big tires. Um, really the only modification that you're gonna see that I've done out on the wing is I have adjusted the incidence of the wing a little bit just to give me a slightly uh, and how I did that is actually in the twist of the wing. It's very difficult to adjust the whole wing incidence without a major fuselage redesign, but What's that? Oh, cool. So and another thing that I've done is one of the big differences between the EX and the EX2 is the aileron design it was designed to be a lot lighter on the controls and I found with the EX you can actually loosen your flying wires a little bit and it really lightens up the controls and if you can can deal with that little extra slop so that you have to actually move your stick about an inch before it becomes effective or maybe a little less than an inch you're gonna have a lot lighter control forces needed to overcome just the friction of the wires itself so even on the ground you're gonna have some force that you're gonna need to overcome just the friction of the wires and I found that just by loosening those up a little bit 
Come there, plane taxi by, little archer. I hope that's not the guy out there that was flying a three mile wide pattern a minute ago. I, I was out there flying a minute ago and man, flight instructors don't teach your students to fly these ridiculously wide patterns. It's horrible. Anyway, so loosen up those flying wires. You'll get a lot less stick pressure required to overcome that friction and really awesome. The only other customization I've done on the wing is my cool little ghost graphic, which is awesome. So the different colors is because I'm a huge DC Comics fan. Can anybody tell me what DC Comics character, he's kind of a villain, actually has black on one side of his face and orange on the other side of his face? Can you tell me that? We'll come back to that because there is a little bit of delay in the live stream. Um, back to the tail, the horizontal. Um, basically a standard horizontal. It does have an electric trim. So I've got a little button on my stick where I can control the trim and it literally has a jack screw in there and raises and lowers the leading edge of that horizontal stabilizer. Um, out of all the parts on my airplane to break, I've broken this part the most. I've thrown up rocks from the, from the, from the wheels into it and literally just taken out the flying wires. Um, I've, I've punctured big huge holes in it from landing on top of a fence accidentally. So the tail takes a lot of abuse, or I tend to give the tail a lot of abuse. So this is actually a new horizontal, this half, just this season. Um, I think I've gone through, this is my third one. <laughs> yeah. I always have also extra flying wires on hand um, because I've also hit a big rock and just taken out a flying wire. And uh, yeah, so it's not really the most awesome thing to say is you're breaking your airplane, but um, I'm getting to the point where I may actually have a horizontal sta stabilizer in stock in case I break one. But I've just had so much luck replacing it and getting it covered really quickly. Um, the most amount of downtime I've ever had by breaking a horizontal and literally mangling it was about a week. And you'd be surprised at how awesome these airplanes fly broken. What, what's that? Switch side. Switch side? Right into that jet. Okay. Yeah. So I, I do have a tail shock, but I have not installed it. Um, for the stole drag and for some backcountry stuff, it does kill a little bit of your angle of attack, and I really like a lot of angle of attack, so I don't have that on right now. The tail is basically a stock tail. Um, I have installed these gap seals in both the, the rudder. So you see this piece of foam in here that seals, it prevents air from basically moving through there when, when you reach critical angle of attack. And so air will actually leak through there and you lose some effectiveness, or at least that's the theory. Um, I did notice, especially on the elevator, it does make a big impact on the elevator. And that's just a piece of foam that you literally just push in there and it's available from, uh, from Cub Crafters. I mean, it's fairly simple to install. You just cut it to length, push it in there, and kind of massage it until it's all in there perfectly. Um, that's, that's definitely worth the 200 bucks that I sent the Cub Crafters to send me that little piece of foam. And I've had them in there for two years now and they're holding up really great. That's a good mod, I like that one. Question. Two dogs RC. Two dogs RC. Would carbon fiber across the leading edge of your elevator help with that? I believe it means the rock chest. I think in some cases, what the question was is if I replace this little vinyl covering that's basically protecting the paint, if I replace that with a piece of carbon fiber, would that help protect the leading edge of my horizontal? And the, the answer to that is, I'm, I'm thinking about when I broke my horizontal, would it have helped? I don't think in my cases it would have, because to be honest with you, in one case, I, I, I was going, I was basically going about 30 miles an hour in a huge rock that was kind of half buried. And so it looked like a much smaller rock came, it basically was thrown up by the wheel. And you know, when a rock gets thrown up, it got thrown up just enough so it bounced and then just hit the horizontal and just I mean it is I still have it in my hangar at some point I'll show it to you in fact I'll get pictures and when we edit this and make it a more of a production value consolidated version 
we'll show pictures of that. Um, I even have a little bit of a video of me flying with, that, with my flying wires just flapping and my horizontal. You could literally grab the leading edge and pull up and down and move it eight to nine inches. In any case, um, I don't think it would have helped because that was such a big rock and it took out the flying wire and everything. It was such a big hit that it probably wouldn't have. Um, I have taken some smaller nicks and a carbon fiber, just a little carbon fiber leading edge would have helped on those. So yeah, thanks for the question. Alrighty, what are we pointing at? You want to see my, it's just a stock tail whale. There's nothing special about the tail whale, but there's a tail whale right there. It's a tail whale. Okay, I have many. So did anybody guess which DC character is responsible for the coloring of my little ghost decal on my wing? Is it dead shot? Dead shot? Yeah. It's not dead shot. Is it? It's not dead shot. Slade Wilson? It is Slade Wilson. Also, also known, as known as Death Stroke. Good job. Who guessed that? A whole bunch? First one to guess it was JP. JP. You're awesome, man. I do like Slade Wilson. I uh, I don't know why I like a villain as opposed to a hero, but whatever. Call me what you want. I just like him. It's cool. Had some epic battles with some like, you know, characters in the comics. I'm a nerd. I love comics. So what? Judge me. <laughs> All right. So I think it's time to go flying. What do you guys think? Who wants to go flying? Yay! Let's go flying. So I'm gonna take the camera from Chris. And we're going to see if we can transition. So stick with us, folks. We're going to transition from doing a walk around, which I've already had the airplane flying. So just for, just so you know, I have already done my pre-flight. I've already flown it around the pattern. I basically pulled it up here to do the walk around for you guys. I'm going to give this little camera case to Jason. Hey, Jason. Hi, everybody. There's Chris. Up, guys? Filming with the uh, vlogging camera. So I'm gonna go jump in the cockpit. I'm chewing on a lozenge still. So I can still get your questions. So keep typing those in. I'm gonna mount you in the airplane here. Oh man, you guys are gonna be my passenger. You guys ready? We're gonna go do some uh, different kinds of flying. We're gonna do some takeoffs and landings. I'm gonna show you some of the, or, or maybe explain some of the different performance characteristics of the cub yeah sure so i'm going to show you a, a takeoff with flaps i'm going to show you a takeoff with no flaps i'll tell you a little bit about the difference in the ground roll and the performance of the airplane and then we'll do some stole takeoffs and try and get it off the ground as short as possible and the same thing with landings we'll do landings with different flap settings and uh we'll go from there what do you guys think fun that puts the fun in fun. Are you going to do the start yourself on the cameras or do you want me to do it? No, you go ahead and start the cameras. Right okay. now would be awesome. Yeah, Thanks, dude. Give a loud clear prop. Okay. Oops. You want a loud clear prop? Yeah. All right. You know. I like it. <laughs> All right, so we're, I'm just getting situated here. I'm not in a big hurry. I apologize for the delay and for the little lull here. Now's a good time for you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That's right. That's right share this with your friends like we're still live here for a good half an hour or so while we're flying so there's that little share button that youtube's added there go ahead and click that share it with your friends on facebook or even share it in your feed on youtube if you have a following i am going to be watching the live feed somebody is is asking the difference between the kit fox versus the carbon cub so i'll get the airplane started and uh We'll talk a little bit about that in the air, maybe. All right, are we ready to go? We all clear? No, you can take, you can keep that. All righty, folks, here we go. Just making sure everybody's clear of the area. Clear! Hers like a kid. <laughs> all right, before we get going here, I'm gonna plug into the intercom system so that you can hear me talking. Now there's sometimes a, uh, a little bit of a challenge getting the GoPro that we're streaming on to switch over 
to the microphone. So let's figure that out real quick. Microphone. We're on the microphone now. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, aircraft set up. We already have the altimeter set. We already have the weather and everything. Hopefully you guys can hear me. All right. See you later, Chris. So I've also got, you'll be able to hear the radio calls and the other people talking as well. Hopefully we got audio. If not, I'll know in a minute here, and I'll adjust it. South Valley traffic, Cessna, Club Tango, turning left, crosswind, South Valley. I am live, Matt. Good to have you on board. Let's see. All right. It sounds like the audio went over perfectly. All right. There's a little bit of a delay on my... My live stream, so it takes me a little while to figure that out. So now I can mute my live stream. Oh, you're going to want to see this. <laughs> there is a an L-39 Albatross going to taxi right in front of me here. We'll follow him to the flight line. Check this out. Right from left to right, an L-39 Albatross. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Got the uh, microphone back. To Alpha Taxiway at Hotel Three. <laughs> All right. 
righty, so I'll pull up a little closer to the L39. Hopefully you can hear me on the mic again. Two, echo turning left downwind on 3-4 South Valley. All right, hopefully that audio will come back. Traffic went down to A0, one picture alpha, five mile final for three, four. Sometimes you gotta unplug it and plug it back in. It's really odd. If I traffic one six, you know, if, if I was GoPro, I would actually have a setting where you could literally select the audio that you, the, the audio channel you wanted. Like if there was a little pull down inside the device and you could say, I want yeah, external traffic, microphone. Nine, and nine five, K -back, uh, and if, it, if you didn't have an external microphone plugged in, it just recorded nothing, that would be awesome. But their software that auto detects whether you have a microphone plugged in or not is a little bit of a bummer. At 6,300 feet heading westbound, South Valley. All right, Seafood Sam. I am saying hello to Wesley. Congratulations on the engagement, by the way. That's awesome. I highly recommend marriage. I've been married now to my wife for 18 years. She's probably watching right now. There's a lot of people on. I appreciate you watching. All right, let's see if we can get this L39. Looks like there's somebody turning final right now. The L39's in uh, position and hold. Or line up and wait's the new term. A couple years ago, they changed that on us. All right, so L39 is gonna light that fire, baby. <coughs> this guy takes a lot of runway. One picture alpha, we're on about a two and a half miles. Yeah, Thomas, I appreciate that. I was being very cautious uh, with that jet blast. Archer five zero. Those things definitely put a lot out. There he goes. See you later. He's gonna use about 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet of runway. That's a lot of moving mass to get started. To join the pattern, South Valley. Shy Gamer, that's a cool YouTube handle. Love it. Welcome to the live stream. All right, so I'm going to turn my airplane so I can see the approach corridor. Looks like two aircraft on final. Looks like one over the numbers now. Got a KC-135 on the top of the screen approaching to uh, Salt Lake International Airport. And uh, got a Cessna just in the flare. And then coming from right to left, it looks like some sort of a King Air. Echo, turning left final on 3 4, South Valley. And then another aircraft on final. It is so busy. All right, love South it. Valley traffic lands 2 9 or 9 or 5 Quebec maneuvering to enter. <laughs> love it. Left Seafood down, Sam. 3 4, South Valley. Looks like that is a Diamond Katana, the twin engine. That's the uh, diesel version. Not a, yeah, Diamond Katana. Not a Diamond Katana. Oh, he's going around. Aircraft on the runway, going around. What a bummer. Would it be a mistake to learn to fly in a Centabra if your eventual goal was to own a tail dragger? Um, it's a question from Damn True. I got a couple minutes here because there looks like two more airplanes on final. I'm just going to wait. Maybe that'll help. All right, so now I've replugged in the microphone. Thank you for letting me know that the audio cuts out. It's just, you know, I haven't touched anything on the camera and it keeps going in and out. Audio is out. So I've plugged it back in. Turning left base, three, four, South Valley, full stop. All right, audio's back. Thank you, Snuffy Sniper. I was talking about the Cetabria. Yes, go ahead and get your flight training in a Cetabria. It's awesome. All right, here comes a Lance. I do not have anybody waiting behind me, so I don't feel too bad for just being patient and letting all these guys uh, get, get their airplanes landed. I've seen two go-arounds now, so, you know, there's no hurry to... 
There's no hurry to get out there and join them if they're doing all those go-arounds because I want to stay in the pattern as well. Some of them are arrivals and they're just, uh, they're going to get out of here and get, get parked on the ramp, so we'll just let them get in. This is a Lance. That's a nice six-seat aircraft. And it looks like my, I can okay, so line up and wait. Flip in here on a 45 for the downwind, uh, uh, three, four. I'm using a GoPro 7, Miss Equestrian. Now we all extend my crossings a little bit for you. South Valley traffic, black cubs, line up and wait, runway three, four. We're staying in the pattern. People are like going, oh. So this takeoff, I'm actually going to do the no flap takeoff Five first. Six, Romeo, crossing three, four. Still have an aircraft on the runway. I'm looking behind me when I before I pull out, make sure nobody's going to ram into me. That's the nice thing about a Cub is they have plenty of visibility. Still have that Lance on the runway. As soon as I see him pulling off, I'll go. And it looks like he's just taking his own sweet time. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Okay, he's pulling off. South Valley Black Cubs on the go, runway 34, state of the pattern. All right, here we go. So no flaps on this takeoff. We'll get the throttle worked up, 40 miles an hour, 45, lift it up. So that's a no flap takeoff. That is the kind of takeoff you'll probably never do in a Cub. But one of my friends wanted me to do it. I rolled, I noticed, probably about 250 feet before I lifted off the ground which is a long, long ways in Ghost. A long, long ways. So to be courteous to the other aircraft in the pattern, I'm actually gonna turn my crosswind as soon as I see that downwind traffic, I beam my left wing. That's one thing I try to do, is always stay as courteous as possible in the pattern. Hey, Chair One Victor Alpha's uh, on a wide left base, uh, three, four. South Valley traffic, Black Cub is left crosswind, runway 34, have the uh, downwind traffic in sight. All right, so we're left crosswind now. Those guys are flying a really wide pattern, way too wide for me, so I'm going to slow the airplane down, get it nice and slow. I'm doing about 70 miles an hour over the ground right now. They're a good mile further out than I am. So I'm now on a left downwind. I have clearly the two aircraft in front of me in sight. I have the one that just called his left base. And then I'm number three, looks like. Now I'm indicating about 50 miles an hour. With one notch flaps in. Just going slow. There's one aircraft about midfield on the runway. Looks like he's starting to accelerate in a touch and go. There's a Black Hawk on Hotel 3. I'm just explaining these to you, so I'm, I'm, I, I kind of run through the situational awareness protocol in my mind when I'm in the pattern, especially when it's super busy, as I'm constantly talking to myself about where all the other aircraft are. Now there's an arrival on the numbers in the flare. That's that twin-engine diamond diesel aircraft. It's got one on about a mile and a half final. Okay, 1-6 Romeo is that... Archer 5 zero Echo, turning left final for 3-4, full stop, South Valley. <laughs> Alright, that's that Archer on final. I'm going to put another notch of flaps in, just so I can go super slow. I'm doing about 50. <coughs> I have tried sailplane flying as a passenger, just for fun. I've, done, I've flown a sailplane as a passenger, just for fun. Victor Alpha is clearing out for you know, if I'm going 50 miles an hour and I'm going slow, I have tons of control. Like right now, I'm indicating 40 miles an hour. And over the ground, I'm doing about 55. But I'm on downwind, so there's a little tailwind going. I usually, when I'm alone and it's light, my airplane, I'll, I'll approach at really slow speeds. Now, to be courteous to these other aircraft in the pattern, I'm going to keep the speed up now. So now I'm turning base behind this, uh, it looks like a Cherokee. He's going to be flying probably about 20 miles an hour faster than me, so I'm going to just kind of cut the corner here just so that there's not a huge amount of space between him and I, and I like it in front of me. Which cup model is my favorite? You know, mine is. <laughs> I don't know. Love the one you're with? I actually really love the Carbon Cub EX. I've flown all of them. I've flown the SS. I've flown the EX2. I've flown the, e the FX3 at EX3. 
is going to be taking off taxiway Alpha. We'll be following a Piper Cub <laughs> that just turned base line. South Valley traffic. All right. And so we still have the uh, it does one six Romeo's going around. So I'm going to just expedite the runway, and I'm going to net land nine. And I'll get it and out. I might be able to get her down in less than a couple of hundred feet today. And I'm going really fast. I'm doing about 60 miles an hour right now over the threshold here. South Valley 633 Romeo departing the pattern on a 45 toward Harriman, South Valley. South Valley Black Cub short final now, 3-4. All right, so now I'm on short final. I'm going to start coming back on the power. i got to get her slowed yeah, down. Going back really back fast here. Okay, so now I'm at my speed. Just kind of bump the power up just a little bit to get on the runway. Here we go. There we go. All right. And stopped before the numbers, guys. Woo! That right there is about 150 feet. So let's take off again. Here we go. This is a stole takeoff. There's 35. Pull it off the ground. Leave two notches of flaps in. Climb out at 50 indicated. Nice and steep. I'm going to turn an early crosswind for the... Uh, Looks like an Apache right there trying to get out of the pattern. He's out on the uh, flaps just to go faster. Push the nose over a little bit so we can work the pattern a little faster. Be courteous for our brothers. All right. South Valley traffic. Black Cubs turning an early left crosswind. Runway 34 for traffic. As I can see that airplane that went around is already on the midfield downwind. And we want to be courteous. Keep the spacing. Checking out taxiway out at Hotel 3. We'll make a left downwind departure toward Harriman. South Valley traffic. All right, there's our target altitude. Southside traffic, 16 Romeo, turning base, 3 4, South Valley. All right, looking for the base traffic. I have the downwind traffic. He's departing the pattern down to the southwest. We've got two airplanes in what we call our practice area here at our field. I have the Apache on his uh, roll. Call it a roll. He was in a hover taxi, kind of watching me land. All right, so now we have this other guy. Looks like he's doing a simulated engine out in the uh, in the Archer, maybe. Okay, let's come back on the power. Start easing the flaps back in because we're already beaming the numbers runway three four. We're watching that base traffic, make, making sure our separation is good. Doing fifty indicated right now. All right, so here we go on short final. And I'm going to go ahead and turn in because I'm a little slower. Keep that spacing good. South Valley traffic, Black Cubs, left base, runway 34. All righty. I love flying. I'm glad you guys could join me. A super fun. Okay, I'm going to watch this uh, Piper aircraft on his... He's on short final now, and I'm on a nice close-in left base. Oh, see, if you're patient, you just wait, and the pattern clears right up. Now there's the Apache, and he's going to depart the pattern. And now it's just me and this uh, Piper in the pattern now. And if I just stay right behind him... 3 3 Romeo, 5 miles to the southwest over... Maneuvering over Harriman, 5,600 South Valley. Okay, so this one I'm going to do a little bit of a slip to line up a little high, because I cut the pattern a little short just to keep the spacing. Because again, I'm in a slower aircraft. Just above glide slope, there's the glide slope right there. Feed in a little bit of power. And the guard copter's departing the area. He's already departing on the downwind. Looks like I have the pattern to myself for a little while. This is awesome. So I'll do another one, see if I can get it stopped a little bit shorter this time. I was a little faster than I liked on that last one. Hold it in the air, hold it in the air, hold it in the air. There's the runway. Bam, get her down. I got stopped inside the bars, boys. Check this out. <laughs> uh, there's where I'm at. There's the bars. That's pretty awesome. That's that's a carbon cub right there. It, Like I said, it's not stock, but it is fun. All right, so let's do a... I'll do a, a takeoff where I pop the uh, the flaps. We'll see if we can get off before the end of the numbers. Uh, the All right, so there we go. And there's the numbers of 3-4 popping off the ground. Oh, I think we didn't make it. <laughs> oh, well.
I think I took off in uh, searching Vanguard copter. Maybe 120 feet, maybe on that one. Right for Butterfield Canyon. All right, Nathan. I'm glad. Uh, we shouldn't be at 5,600. Sorry about my cough into the mic there. I really apologize. No fun. I'm still overcoming a little bit of a cold. I'm listening for traffic. Sounds like there was a couple aircraft coming in. I do have ADSB in and out on this, so that really helps, but a lot of airplanes are still not equipped. Oh no, the stream cuts out when I'm on final. Maybe I'll, I'm going to try landing a little longer on this one. Maybe I can keep the stream alive. <coughs> South Valley traffic, Black Cubs, left crosswind, runway 34. I'll uh, try and land about midfield on this one, see if I can keep that stream going. And South Valley, Black Cubs, mid Field, left downwind. All right, so as you can see, I'm flying a really close in pattern. There's really not a lot of point in uh, going super far away for no reason whatsoever. And so that road that I was uh, that road that I was coming in on final over, I'm going to make that one my left base, and so I'll be a little higher and see if the stream can uh, stick around a little bit longer. We're going to slip it a little bit. Boop -a -doo. South Valley traffic, Black Cub, left base, runway 3-4, landing long, stop and go. All right, so I'm just having fun. Maybe I'll leave the pattern here in a minute. You want to see the airport. So I'm going to turn this camera slightly to the left. Hopefully that gives you an angle. There's my approach. Bump a little bit of power. I, I was adjusting my camera instead of, I missed my turn there. Okay, so I'm going to hold a little power in, go a little long. We'll aim for the 1,000 foot marker. Okay, we're doing about 40 indicated, about 43 over the ground, 42 over the ground, 30 indicated now. Holding it off, holding it off, holding it off. A little power. Okay, and down. We can get her stopped inside the bars. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Done. There's the bars, still have about 25 feet in front of me. Yeehaw. All right, I'm gonna do a nice no flap takeoff. We'll keep her low. Just kinda take her off the ground nice and slowly. She likes to fly. All right, we'll pull it off. <laughs> Doing 50 miles an hour with 35s. Okay, so we'll go nice and slow. There's the airport there. We got the FBO just passing that. Then there's a maintenance building right there. Airport manager's office right there on the left. And pull her off the ground. So the long landing seemed to be a little better for the stream. That's good to know. I'm going to pull her up. About a 30 degree angle if I really try. That's okay, Scott. You know, I've gotten to the point where this airplane is so easy to fly, and it's not your fault if you ask me a question. It's kind of my fault. <laughs> oh, man. A little bit of sun left. I can probably get one or two off airport landings in if you wanted to see those. Now, South Valley traffic, Black Cubs, left downwind, runway 34. Heck yeah, William. I'm so glad you're here. I hope the stream didn't drop. I'm still seeing it on my uh, on my screen, so hopefully you can still see it. We are almost W. I don't know what W means. Oh, the bit rate's really low. It might have dropped out, huh? Let me uh, try the option. All right. Okay, here we go. Coming in for one more landing, and then I'm going to depart on a right or a left. Uh, well, I'll, I'll overfly the field, kind of do a proper departure of the field. So I'm easing in the flaps, coming in in a slip. I don't know if you can see that. The camera's pointed right at it, so it be, should be kind of a nice view of a slip here. Add a little power so we can land a little longer. When you do a slip, you come in a little bit faster. Just because you don't want to... Traffic, Lance, 2-9 or 9 or 5 Quebec, uh, taxi in 3-4 via Bravo. 
You don't want to have uh, a situation where you just tip stall the aircraft, so you come in a little bit faster in a slip. So I'm holding it in the slip until right above the ground, about 10 feet there. Come back on the power. Not necessarily the shortest landing ever, but you know, it's a cub. They land short no matter what you do. That was about a 200 foot landing. Just kind of easing her on the ground. Um, you know, Proto's asking, so what's my rule of thumb for picking a landing aiming point? And I gotta tell you, it really, at this point in my flying, if I can't hit a point that I'm aiming for, then I've, I have, I'm, that would scare me. Because sometimes I'm landing somewhere, and if you're not nailing, landing exactly where you want to be, that's not great. So really what it comes down to is practice, practice, practice. Um, get out there and figure out your aircraft's flight characteristics. If you got a floater of an airplane and you know power off, it's going gonna, it's gonna to float on you, then maybe you're a little fast. If you're having to adjust the throttle and you're behind that power curve, that's really where you want to be in a backcountry aircraft. South Valley traffic, Black Cubs, left cross rim, one way, three, four. Like, you know, I um, see flying into the sun, you don't want to look at the window, and you can see me a little bit. <laughs> We're going to sneak out and see if we can find a, there's a buddy of mine that has some grazing land. He has a, either horses or cattle on it, depending on who he leases the, the, the grazing rights to. And he may not have anything on it, which would be ideal. South Valley traffic, Black Cubs departing off the crosswind leg to the west. Turn a little bit. I do see a couple of airplanes. No, nobody in the area now. Everybody's left and gone. So I'll show you here in a minute, once I get out into the, the hill. So I'm cruising, I, I pulled the power back. I'm doing about 95 miles an hour indicated. I'm burning about six and a half gallons an hour. And what I was talking about, if there's no horses on it and no cattle on it, I know the owner and uh, he says I can land out there whenever I want. That's awesome. So I'm gonna go check it out. Pull up. <laughs> uh, my GPS thinks I'm low. Pull up. Why, thank you, computer. And the winds are absolutely perfect for landing on this field as well. It's the same one I did on my last live stream. The reason why I land on that one so often is it's really close by. Literally, I'm... I can see the field now. It's a little yeah, hazy. Have a glance. Two nine or nine or five, Hi, Taking, Mom. Uh, three, four. Uh, a lot of beginning of the, the video. And then as I turn on final, it won't quite be so bad. But I want to turn the camera now, because this is a backcountry landing. And I don't want to be messing around with it while I'm trying to fly the airplane. So I'm going to get it turned around. I got a couple more minutes before I have to get serious about the business. Because the sun is going down a little bit. And at least it didn't say retard, retard. No doubt, Grant. That's so funny. It's not a, uh, a French ground proximity warning system. Okay, so right up ahead, you'll kind of see slightly to the right is my landing spot. The sun is in a good position for this landing. Obstacle ahead. Pull up. I know there's an obstacle. I'm, I'm landing. Okay, so I'm going to come back on the throttle. I can see the little ridge line I want. There's a lot of smoke in the air. There's a lot of the smoke coming from those uh, fires in California. Um, so shout out to the guys in California that are suffering with those fires. If you can, donate some money to the California Wildfire Relief Funds. There's several of them. Uh, the Red Cross is a good one. All right, so we're in shadow on the field that we're going to land on. It's just off our right. I'm on kind of a modified right base. I'm going to turn my final now. Here is, it's kind of a challenging little strip. There's some big rocks on it, and you got to land nice and short. But as you can see, I can do that. Here we are. Finally, I can see because of the, the brightness and the contrast. Okay, looking for rocks. All right, here we go. There we go. We're on the, the ridge. 
Keeping the tail off out of the rocks and down. That is so fun, you guys. Thanks for coming along on my bush landing. I think that's all we're going to be able to do with this uh, sun going down. So I'm going to head back to the airport. I'll get the airplane. Uh, I'll taxi back, turn back around, and we'll take off and head back to the airport. What do you guys say? What do you think? Come on. Am I still streaming? <laughs> Man, you guys. Here we go. I'm going to take off again. Here we go, get her pointed into the relative wind. We're t it's an uphill complex takeoff. So I'm gonna get the throttle all the way up, release the brakes, let's get that tail up. So we can see in front of us, there's a big rock right there. Let's get out of that, Wee! All right, we're off the ground. Accelerate the best angle, pitch it up, and we're back in the air. Yeehaw, baby. Woo! Bush flying, it's the best thing in the whole world. Ha ha! Okay, let's head back to the airport. Sun's going down. Hey, thanks for joining me on this live stream, you guys. I sure hope you have enjoyed it. Please share my channel with your friends. As I grow, our capability to deliver great content to you is increased. So I sure appreciate everybody watching today. Um, man, how fun is that to be able to live stream? I appreciate it, Steve. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Dana. Go ahead and ask me questions. I'm going to stream all the way until I get back to the hangar. This is your opportunity to ask me whatever you want. We still have a good stream going. But go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Share it with your friends, like I said. Support the channel by buying some merch at uh, the, the Flying Cowboys store, which is in the links below. And here we go. Uh, thanks. Two Dog RC, Longfellow 1000. Oh man, that was fun. I actually got a little bit of a tailwind on that one. The wind changed up in the mountains and my takeoff roll was about 15 feet longer than I wanted. And sometimes 15 feet's the difference between yikes and yee-haw. <laughs> South Valley traffic, black Cubs on a 45 for the right downwind for runway 34. We're two and a half miles to the west inbound. I do have ADSB out, Trey. You can check it out. My end number is 371 Romeo Juliet. I do fly around Snowbird. Maybe I'll do a video flying around Snowbird. I'll wait for ski season and I'll wait for a bluebird day. And I'll go show you the lifts and everything. What was my first bush landing like? Oh boy, I gotta tell you, um, my very first one, I actually went up to a flight school in McCall, Idaho, and it was taught by a, a lady named Lori McNichol, and she assigned me a kind of an old timer flight instructor, and I was flying in a 182 with big tires on it, and I took a, a bush flying course. It was for a penny. Not cheap. You really learn how to get it done in the backcountry. I think my very first one was, pretty, uh, I think it was John. Oh. It's a 3,000 foot plus runway, uh, Frank Church Wilderness. South Valley traffic, Black Cubs, midfield, right downwind, or excuse me, left downwind, runway 3 4. All right. Uh, you're impressed able to stream while flying. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chris, the altitude at my home base. Well, that's a great question. Um, let me get on the ground and I'll get that for you. I do have the ability to grab that. Do I like flying high or low? Well, what do you think? <laughs> flying low, absolutely. All right, back to an idle. Over the bridgeyard north of Harriman, setting up to enter the downwind on 3-4 South Valley. South Valley traffic, Black Cubs turning left base, close in, runway 3-4. Okay, yeah, so um, so much fun to watch. Joining from Barcelona, Spain. Well, welcome from Barcelona. Good to have you aboard. It's sunset here in Salt Lake City, Utah, here in the United States. And so I'm going to get this bird on the ground and maybe answer some more of your questions before I go. We're on final now. South Valley traffic, Black Cub is short final now, runway 34. An airplane. I was to build an airplane. Honestly, we'd build another Carbon Cub EX. Um, 
Yeah, South Valley, uh, citation 650 Bravo, Victor, in front of the FBO. Going to be taxiing southbound on Bravo. Land right Bravo. in front of the taxiway here. Keep the tail up. There's no need to go short. I hope you enjoyed flying today. We're looking for that citation. Go. South Valley traffic. Black Cubs clear the active. Alpha 2 for the ramp. All right. All right, looking for the citation. I don't necessarily want a taxi right behind a jet. It's uh, no bueno. <laughs> uh, sometimes I slip with flaps, sometimes I don't. To answer your question about slipping with flaps, um, it definitely has different characteristics. Slipping with or without flaps. In the Carbon Cup, it's a very forgiving aircraft. Alrighty, how much money do you have into your cub? Oh man, now that's a loaded question. Is that a fair question? I think it is. I'll be honest with you, I don't know the exact numbers. Um, I got a great deal when I purchased this this cub. Uh, I bought it out of uh, New York State and flew it home across the entire country. Um, got a really good deal on it. Um, kind of an insider deal. So I was really happy about that. Um, I'm probably in this airplane just over $200,000. Uh, I hate saying that because it, it's more real. But I got to tell you, smiles per dollar, this is an amazing airplane. I'm going to turn off the radio, don't need that anymore. And I'll just talk to you guys. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut down. I'm going to keep the stream going. To answer your questions, you can watch me put the airplane away. And I'll just hang out. We'll be pals. Let's do it. I'll uh, show you my best tug. And we'll go from there. Boom! I'm going to shut. <laughs> ben, you are right. Um, I could have a Ferrari, I guess, with all the money I've got into this airplane. Um, let me turn this around while I get unstrapped. Hey, guys! Huh. Man, this is so much fun. I cannot believe the stream held for as long as it is. This is the little filter I had on the front of there. It really helps with uh, the propeller um, not being this big noodle in front of you. I mean, it was still there, as you could plainly see. It didn't eliminate it completely, but it really helps out quite a bit. Flying is much better than driving. Show us your fort. <laughs> you want to see my hanger? You don't want to see it. It's a mess. You don't want to see that. That's embarrassing. I have not cleaned it since I got back from High Sierra flying. What's up, Chris? How's it going? That was fun, dude. Did going? you guys watch the stream? Yeah. Was it awesome? I loved it. Okay. So I'm going to take the camera out and show you Chris helping me out here. There's Chris. How's What's it going? On, guys? <laughs> now, Chris is actually pretty cool. We're going to start um, showing him a little bit more on the channel. Chris is getting his commercial now which is pretty awesome. He's already got his instrument rating and he's flying all the time down over to California and Arizona and everywhere. He's going up to the Pacific Northwest and he's just cruising around everywhere, which I think is fantastic. Did we lose the feed? Uh, I think we're still live. Okay. No, it is, we're still live. Holy cow, let me press, uh... <coughs> worth the money, better than a Ferrari, somebody says. Amen. Absolutely. You got Jason over there. How's it going, Jason? Super good. You got GoPros in your hands? So many GoPros. So we we filmed that entire thing, and so we're going to edit up a cut-up version of this live feed and put it out for you guys next week. Um, we'll see how fast that comes together. Chris right here is the producer and doing a vast majority of the editing. It's a lot of fun. A lot of He's flying, awesome. a lot of airplane noise. So we're going we're gonna to start following his journey a little bit into the commercial world see i don't know what his plan is but we're going to talk about that and share it with you had to pop out to answer a call thanks for the answer on the starboard you're welcome ferraris are really hard to land if you get a ferrari in the air yeah bro That's <laughs> so i'm gonna go hook up the uh car the best tug i'm gonna give i'm gonna hand the camera to chris and he's gonna i'll show you the best tug that i've got ticket magnets you guys we're not seeing very many super chats I just burned a lot of gas for you people. No, I had a lot of fun. If 
you guys want to support the channel, we're trying to get together, now that we know that this live streaming thing might work, we're gonna invest a little bit more in some uh, better um, data uplink. That'll be awesome. If we can stream, stream in the middle of nowhere, we're in the middle of nowhere in the back country and we can do a live stream for you guys, that'll be awesome. But what it's gonna take from you guys is to maybe help out with some cheddar because my wife will freaking kill me if I start spending thousands of dollars on stuff just to live stream on YouTube. I hope you understand. And how you do that support is by subscribing, by clicking that like button, by sharing with your friends, by buying cool Flying Cowboys or Corey Robin Channel merchandise down below. There's a link to that in the description. Or I even think that there's even some stuff you can buy right here inside of YouTube. Um, or super chats, whatever. I'll take whatever money you want to send and we will spend it wisely and put it all back into producing awesome flying content. All right, I'm gonna go hook up the tug. Um, I'm gonna pull my airplane a little bit just to get the tail wheel situated. Let me show you my best tug. This thing's awesome. So I have a buddy, his name is Mark Patey, who started this company because he, his wife owns a Cirrus SR22 and she couldn't go flying unless he came out to pull the airplane out for her. Because there just wasn't a tug that, that she could operate reliably, especially in Utah here, we get a lot of snow. And so he's designed, look how easy this is. You just hook it up to your tail and it's got this little handle up here. Show this handle that it's on my hand. So it's got this little handle. Now you can go back to this and you move this forward and it just locks that tail wheel right into place. And then this all pivots. This is sweet. Look at this. And so to pull the airplane in, I can just literally use one hand. This is the best tug. Um, this is their smallest version. And this tug will work on anything from a Cub to a Cirrus, to a Piper, to a Cessna. Um, I was really out of position there. And you can see how easy it was to turn the airplane and just pull it right in. Um, they have bigger models if you got a bigger airplane. And this is not a sponsored video. I just really love my tug because there's nothing like you're out flying hard all day long and nothing like not having to use your muscles and be all fatigued to pull your airplane in. You can just get your tug out. And as you can see, I actually have some really cool orange mood lighting. In case you didn't notice, orange is my favorite color. So check out this lighting. I mean, come on, I'm turning it on and off for you. Okay. And then, you know, you just, the battery lasts for like a month, but I always just keep it plugged in because that's just how I roll. I apologize for the messy hanger. <laughs> How's our signal now that we pulled in the hanger? Are we all messed up now? You got to tell me I can't see it. I'll look, I'll look on the box. Dude, full signal. Right on. To outer space. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, um, I'm going to look at this chat one more time, see if I can answer. You know, Chris is, is making a comment about my tail wheel being really small. <laughs> Size isn't everything, Chris. <laughs> Besides, as you noticed, when I was flying in the back country there, I let the main landing gear do the work. It's rare for me as a back country pilot to bang my tail on things. Um, the only time I don't like my small, narrow tail wheel is if I'm landing on a soft surface. If it's a rough surface, I don't care because I just fly the tail. I just don't get my tail in a situation where it's going to bang on a rock or have to run over something heavy. I do have a tail shock from Airframes Alaska that I can install and a little bit bigger tail wheel, but that kills my angle of attack, therefore increasing my takeoff and landing distance. Um, and if I have the smaller tail wheel, it's further away from those rocks when I am flying the tail. So potato, potato, it's a matter of preference. I've flown with the bigger, fatter tail wheels. Um, I just don't prefer it. And it's just a personal preference thing. Some pilots like to bang around their tail in the terrain. I'm just not one of them. Uh, I like to, you know, I don't, want, I don't want to break a weld or something. If you're banging your tail on rocks and things like that, you're going to break stuff, which I've definitely done. Speaking of breaking stuff, here's the horizontal, one of the horizontals that I've gone through. <laughs> so as I was going through the walkthrough earlier, this one I hit a big rock with my, my, my main gear. It bounced it up and it smacked into here and then literally bashed into 
my horizontal and I flew it home 70 miles with this big hole in it. Now I've cut away some of the fabric to do the inspection to see if it was salvageable, but that leading edge is still bent up. I just didn't want to mess with it. So, and when you can buy a new horizontal and get it out, you know, back on the airplane painted and everything for, for a reasonable price, there's just no point in trying to spend all kinds of time salvaging that. I've kept it for nostalgia purposes, just to, just to keep that around. Pretty awesome. All right, let's, let's see if there's any more questions. I did fly that home about 70 miles home. I do have, I did have a buddy with me. Um, at that point, you don't use your horizontal or you, I didn't use my elevator. I basically used my flaps to do the flare and I tried to baby it onto the ground. I have flown a super decathlon. I have about maybe 200 to 300 hours in a super decathlon. Um, back when I was a kid, um, I think I was like 19 years old. I used to fly aerobatics quite heavily. And a super decathlon is how I got my start. Um, I went down to Chandler, Arizona. And back then it was called Chandler Air Service. And they had a really good course for getting into aerobatics. And they had several different levels. They had a novice. So if you've never flown aerobatics before, they had a course for that. Um, and so that, I took that course and I had, uh, uh, I was in a partnership in a decathlon. So yep, I've flown a decathlon a lot. Um, what line of work got me here? I've never flown as a professional pilot. Um, I've just always wanted to fly for fun. Um, I am a, in my day job, in my real life, I am a software nerd and proud of it. Um, I'm a coder. I, I, you know, I made a, my money developing software. Um, and I started out just as a programmer writing code and eventually I started my own business and I own my own business today. Um, if you go to skyvantage.com, uh, that's the business that I own. We do software for airlines. And I, we've filmed a video about what I do. I just haven't released it yet. Gosh, if comment below if you're interested in seeing a video on what I do for a living. If you're interested, I'll release it. I just think it's kind of boring. You don't want to know me. You want to just go flying, right? Um, let's see, thinking about painting your Horizon Hobby Z-Cub, my scheme, looks awesome. Brian, if you do that, that would be awesome. I will send you the files for all the graphics. Um, send some pictures. Yeah, we actually have all in digital format all the all the graphics on the sides and on the wings and everything. Uh, we have it for you if you want it. I'm happy to give that to you. Any idea of where to get an address to send Nick a care package? Yes, Trey. That is a great question. As everybody knows, my buddy Nick, uh, he's a close friend of all of us flying cowboys, uh, just finished up building his kit box and had an accident a week and a half ago or so. Um, basically totaled the aircraft and you know fought for his life. He's out of the woods, thank goodness. He's still got some surgeries left. I've got an address in my about section on my channel. If anybody sends anything care, you know, for Nick to that, it's a PO box. If you send those packages there, I'll make sure Nick gets them. I appreciate that. Um, it's humbling to see all the support we get, um, especially when something doesn't go right. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for asking that. That's an awesome question. You're interested on the video. Thank you. I'm glad you're interested. <laughs> um, software development. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's a good way to make money. Being a pilot's a good way to make money as well. So I'm not going to frown on either. I just wanted to keep flying fun. And I had an uncle who was a air ambulance pilot. And before that he was an airline pilot. And uh, he just said, Hey Corey, you know, you have a talent for software development. Um, I think you should do that. And you'll probably make more money doing that than you would by being a professional pilot. And then you can just fly for fun. And I've just been so blessed to, for that to work out. It, and it has worked out. I'm very lucky to have what I do. And I'm not a wealthy, rich guy. Um, I, I'm very lucky to have this carbon cub and the circumstances that allowed me to purchase it were like winning the lottery. In a normal world, I would never be able to afford spending this much money on an airplane, but um, I'll just be honest with you. I won a lawsuit and got a big bunch of cash. Didn't want to pay taxes on it, so I invested it in a hard asset. Bam, that's the truth. <laughs> Shazam, I have a carbon cub. <laughs> A carbon cup. I'm so lucky. I love my airplane. Thank you for asking. Let's see. Yes, graduate with a useful degree. 
computer science. There's a lot of professional pilot programs. I will not discourage anybody. The pay for pilots is going to go up a lot over the course of the next few years due to the pilot shortage. That's what happens in a supply and demand economy. Right now there's a demand for people to become professional pilots. So there's a short supply. So what's gonna happen? Salaries are gonna go up. Now is a good time to switch careers and to become a pilot. I'm not gonna discourage anybody from becoming a pilot because the next 10 years are gonna be very, very interesting. And I think pilot salaries are gonna go up across the board. So people that are already in it are gonna see increases, but they're going to have to make an incentive for people to change careers from something to become a pilot. So if you're digging trenches, go to flight school. If you're a software developer and you wanna be a pilot, go to flight school. Because the next 10 years, you're gonna see some fun things in aviation because there is a legitimate pilot shortage. In fact, I think by the year 2020, they're projecting that they're going to be over 60,000 pilots short. So this next little while, you're gonna see a lot of training programs become available for new pilots. Um, I, I work in the aviation industry, even in my software company, it's airline software. So I am very, very in tune as to what's going on in the aviation industry, in the airline industry. And there's definitely globally a worldwide pilot shortage. Now is a great time to become a pilot. You just got into web design. You're happy I code too. It makes me wanna continue coding as a job. Well then do it, but become a pilot as well. Cause being a pilot is awesome. You can see, I love it. I do it for fun. and. I find myself tremendously blessed to have it. Why didn't I choose a Piper Super Cub? Will Duns asks a great, great question. What's the, the difference between my Carbon Cub and a Piper Cub? There's not a huge amount of difference other than Cub Crafters has refined the Carbon Cub so that it's a very refined and it's a refined. It, it's refined. It's got a lot of things that a Super Cub just doesn't have that it or maybe aesthetics or maybe the feel it's a well-balanced aircraft it's also its next brother the super cub which you can go out and buy a 160 horsepower super cub and it's going to be a great performer it's not going to perform like a carbon cub my aircraft is a thousand pounds you're going to be hard pressed to find a piper super cub less than 1200 pounds so empty I've got 200 pounds on my nearest Piper Cub relative. That's like flying around with a dude in the back seat all the time. And that's a reality. So I'm going to perform better. I've got a higher horsepower motor. I've got 180 horse and the average Piper Cub's gonna have 150, 160, some are 180, some are even 200, just depends. Um, I really like my Carbon Cub, plus it's experimental and I can do my own maintenance. And a lot of the Piper Cubs are certified. Drake is saying he wants to get his pilot's license, but got to find money. Drake, AOPA.org. Listen, this is legit. There's a lot of grant programs and financial aid programs for people wanting to become a professional pilot. AOPA.org. And you look on there for financial aid programs. There's grants, there's financial, there's student loan programs. There's really no excuse right now to wait to get involved. Um, there's student loan programs where you basically get all the money for the entirety of your flight training program and you don't have to start paying it back until you get your first job. Don't wait. <laughs>